There's a few things I've learned in my adult life that I can do without. Cable television. Cellular devices. These two idiots. But a non-functioning tachometer? What is this, a stone age? So as you probably figured out by now, our tack is broke, which generally wouldn't be a big deal because it's not too big of a job to fix a non-functioning tack. However, when you throw Scatapillar into the equation here, it becomes a problem and it becomes expensive. Let me show you. Now there's one and a half reasons the tack doesn't work on this. The big reason is the tack drive, which you can't see, and that's part of the big problem. It's way up in there, lots of stuff in the way, which I'm not afraid of a challenge, but I am afraid of the fact that it's $175 just for the tack drive. The second part of this equation, the cable's got this burnt spot in it here, and it's got a big flat region in it. But that being said, the cable's not broke. However, it, it's, it's got a catch. I put a drill on it, it'll spin the tack, but it's zit, 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 zit. You can, you can hear the whole thing. It's just a vibrating shimmy and mess. And, there's, let's face it, friends, there's enough vibrating on this thing. I don't need one more thing in there going as I'm trying to sit in the field all day long. I don't know how much the tack cable cost because I couldn't find one online for it. I'm guessing somewhere between five and a hundred dollars. So, you know, that said, right there, just with the tack drive and the cable, hours worth of work to get in there. I'm looking at big money and a headache and a backache and probably other things are going to hurt that I don't want to share with you. So rather than endure myself and all you fine people through the headache of trying to change all that and uh, you know keep my wallet somewhat somewhat into the into the black and not the red, I bought this guy on Amazon for forty bucks. Generally speaking, I'm not a huge Amazon supporter, but in this case, I had no choice. Everything I found on other purchasing websites had that tag. Similar priced or less, but the downside, every one of them was coming from Banzai, China, and I, sorry, I just can't, I, I just can't support that. Maybe that one came from there too. I guess I don't know that, but it made it here in two days, and that's what's important to me right now. I got to get this done. And furthermore, anything I can do to help some scalionaire cowboy ride in a giant flesh rocket all the way to Uranus. Hey, more power to you. Never mind that. Let's get on with this project. Oh, first step in our process, let's get the old stuff out of here. Okay, now I don't know what kind of job this is going to be, but the fine people at Massey, they didn't screw up making this cab. This baby's stout. All I got to do is take out all 178 of those bolts so I can get up behind here, take whatever's holding that out of there, out she goes, and then the real fun begins. Let's do this. Friends, I don't understand this, but there's more dirt on the inside of this cab than there is on the outside of this cab. Animals, I tell you. This should be easy. Forget to pull your emergency brake. Oh, that's in there good. Wonder why it has a parking brake. It doesn't work. Get that. Excellent. Wonder what that did. So you, you're out of here. Okay. Going in. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, that ain't so bad. Oh, 
Well, would you look at that? I got a height and a weight adjustment right on this. Oh, ho, ho. right in the pills. Some days it just don't pay to get out of bed, guys. I'm telling you. Some days. Hornet nest. It's amazing the stuff you find in your tractor from this point of view. Amazing. 46 years of history down here, guys. Close enough. Now, how do I get out of here? Am I trapped? Give this new unit a test fit. Let's see if I, if my math was good. Well, look at that. All right, that means we can proceed with the rest of this project. Uh, yep. Can give me a hand here, Fluffy. Hey, easy. Grounded. Okay, so now that we got the cab wiring done, ground, power, that, that's it, there's no more. You gotta hook it up to the W terminal on this alternator, which it doesn't have. Not to worry. All we gotta do is take this off here, perform quick surgery, put it back on, run a wire in the cab, and bingo, we're done. Yep, you said it, Fluffy. What could go wrong here? Be sure to always unhook your battery before doing any electrical work. Come on, you over there. Hmm. Okay, fellas, if you've never done one of these before, don't panic. Nothing to it. Just got to take these four bolts out. Beware, because the brushes are spring-loaded, and then they will fly out of there. When we go to put them back in, we'll use this. Less talky, more work. Now, it's important when you're pulling this apart, remember the position it went in. It'll bolt back on in any different direction. And say you are wrong, this might not be where it should have been and you may have problems. So if you've got the brain capacity that I have, which is about, just try a pencil mark on there. That way you'll know. Okay. If you look, you got those three guys right there. All you gotta do to make this alternator charge your tachometer, pick whichever one you like the best, route it out through that hole, slam this whole thing together, and uh, we're gonna be in business. We are gonna be in business. It's gonna be good. Okay, I've chosen today to go with some red wire to keep everything confusing, and it's the only color I've got in my toolbox, so. It's gonna have to work. Let's just run that right up in. There, I got my fat head in the way. I think there's a ghost upstairs. Someone's gotta keep guard of the place, I guess. Remember before, I was talking about the spring-loaded brushes in here, and they're gonna fly out, and they did. Let's put the springs back in. No, oh, you're not gonna be able to see any of this, so just listen along. Got my two springs here. I'm gonna put these springs down in their holsters. Okay, now I gotta jam the brushes down on top of those springs and into their appropriate holster. 
This might be tricky. Let's see if I can. There. Okay. This will be nearly impossible to see, but let's try. So there's my brush holder. There's that drill bit that I stuck through there. That's gonna hold those brushes down while I try to reassemble the armature in the front end and clock everything properly and hope it, uh, hope everything works when I'm done. Yep, there they are. Yes. Not too much. There. Does that count as a rebuilt alternator? Oh yeah. Yep. All right. Let's slam this back together and see if anything works. Okay. Got everything wired up. I mean, better than could be expected. Red to green, black to black, red to brown. Everything's like it should be. Now, with this particular unit, it says in the uh, manufacturer's suggestion to manually figure out what your RPMs are and set the tack to that. Well, if I had that option, I would do it. So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to fire it up and see if it works, first of all. First of all. Then, best of my recollection, the one of these that I grew up on, it idled at 1,000 RPMs, 1,100, something like that. So wherever it goes, I'm going to turn it back to where it's idling at 1,000. And uh, you know what? It ain't got to be perfect. She just got to be good enough. Let's see what we got. Three grand. for joining me for another successful upgrade on our Massey 1805 extravaganza. I promise if the weather ever starts to cooperate, I will paint this tractor. It won't look like this for long, hopefully. Well, that's gonna do it, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Maybe I should start growing rice.